My brother is in the last year of his third college degree. He already has a bachelor's in the history of art and sociology, and in the spring he'll finish one in communications. He lives with our parents, and they pay his bills and all the college stuff his loans don't cover. He's never had a job before. My mom does all his laundry, cooking, cleaning, and general caretaking. My dad receives all his bills for his car, phone, and other stuff, and makes sure they get paid and make sure his bank account has money in it. I can't even imagine how much debt he has, or how much my parents have given him for college on top of his bills. When my parents went on trips before the virus, my brother would run out of clean clothes and instead of doing laundry, because he doesn't know how, he just bought new clothes until they came back. He didn't buy groceries, clean, mow the lawn, or do other chores. I moved out after I finished high school, so normally I mind my own business and don't comment on anything my brother or parents do. I live in another state, so it doesn't affect me at all. I didn't do any college, community college, or any other kind of schooling. I did an apprenticeship and became an electrician. I don't think there's anything wrong with going to college, but some people like me aren't cut out for it. The last time I talked to my parents, my mom told me my brother has been applying into graduate school MA programs for next fall. He wants to do it in sociology or librarian science, but he is still looking at programs. Two of the schools he wants to apply at are the ones my dad went to college and law school at. So, as legacy student, but he's looking at others to see who will accept him. I think my brother needs to grow up, get a job, and stop leeching off my parents. I haven't been supported by them since I was 18. I'm 30 now, and it's time he joined me. He's 29 now, but I didn't say that because, like I said, it's not my business. It was what my mom said next, though. She said she's happy to know that I'll look after my brother if something happens to them before he's done with college. Or I'll help her and my dad if my brother gets too busy once he gets his high-paying job. I told my mom none of that is happening. I don't know where she got this. I'll never give them or my brother money. I said if she's worried, they need to stop enabling my brother's laziness, and if his spending drives them to ruin, it's not on me. I only said this because of what she said. Her and my dad are young, 51 and 56. But if my brother keeps bleeding them dry, they'll be in trouble later on, but they are making their own beds. My brother won't be raking it in if he ever gets a job. My mom told my brother and dad what I said. All of them are PO'd at me, but I was only speaking the truth. And I only said something because of what my mom said first. They want me to say sorry and retract it, and think I'm jealous of my brother's degrees, which is not true in the slightest. Not the a-hole. I also sincerely hope no one marries your brother, because that will be a full-time job caring for a child who will never grow up. Not the a-hole. Mum at least already realizes what they have created if she's assuming once he gets a high-paying job. I'd love to know what job she thinks he will get with the degrees he has. He won't help them. She's trying to lay the groundwork for you to do so, and good on you for setting that straight. Not the a-hole. It sounds like he continuously studies so he doesn't have to get a job. Otherwise, he would be working, supporting himself, and doing his continued studies part-time. The fact they thought you'd support them or your brother is laughable. You cleared up their unrealistic expectations in a non-confrontational and mature approach. Brother can support himself, and if he gets that big-paying future job, then he can support them. Why does it fall back on you? After all, you support yourself and they have supported him, and he can return the favor if they expect it. Your brother is PO'd because you have now got them thinking about their future finances, which will impact him, and they are PO'd because they expect you to fix the problem they created. So, about five years ago, my parents got divorced because my dad was cheating on my mom with another woman. Let's name her Chloe. My mom was obviously devastated after 26 years of marriage, and she quickly rebounded out of guilt, revenge, whatever. The marriage between my parents broke up, the house, biggest equity, was sold, and my mom managed to scrape every penny out of my dad possible in the legal proceedings. Good for her, although no amount of money can cover up emotional damage. Mom has been with her boyfriend now for four years, and he is the most decent, welcoming, and friendly guy I've met. He takes great care of my mom, never pushes any boundaries, is involved with the family, and is always there to help in any situation. My dad, on the other hand, has stayed with Chloe since the divorce. He has bought a house, acted as if everything is normal, and is quite honestly a sociopath. We've never met her, she has never expressed any interest in meeting us, and has never once reached out to us separately or individually, to introduce herself. 
When I needed to briefly move back to my home country to finish university, I asked to stay at my dad's house that he shares with Chloe for just a week or so while I found a room to rent in the city. Chloe and my dad declined and said they wouldn't be able to help out. Fair enough, whatever. I just spent more time searching and eventually found something. No thanks to them. My partner and I are due to be married next year. We're having quite a small wedding, only with close friends and family who we value. We're having the wedding in the country where my partner is from, so the few family and friends I have invited are flying out to celebrate. We decided, as a couple, not to invite Chloe. Dad is now kicking up a fuss and goes on a sociopathic rage about how we're spoiled and we've put him in an impossible situation. He's clearly hurt, but the choice we have made is steadfast and will not change. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Though I haven't been able to provide a full backstory about my dad and how he has acted, a realization I had is that I wouldn't have made this post without his manipulative way of twisting an argument to be about him. I thought for a brief moment that, yeah, maybe I am the a-hole. He raised me, and he deserves to be invited. This situation, and some reflection on the hurt he caused my mum, myself, and the whole family, has driven me to uninviting, and I will be cutting all contact with him in the future. I'm inclined to say, I don't know how I didn't know this before. But I did, and his techniques of manipulation and sociopathic tendencies are the cause for my misjudgments in his behavior. It's not worth having toxic people like this in my life, my mom's life, and if you find yourself in a similar situation, I urge you to think rationally, as I am now. Not the a-hole. You have no relationship with a woman at all, or rather, the one time you reached out to even potentially have one, she and your father declined to help you. Why should you share your special day with a stranger? To be honest, I'm surprised you're inviting your father. Not the a-hole. The only people that should be at your wedding that you've never met should be people you've paid to be there, bartenders, servers, etc. Your dad didn't even let you stay at his house for a week, so I'd understand if you didn't want him there either. In all honesty, from what you've said, I'd think he'll either not be there or bring Chloe anyway and argue to let her stay. Not the a-hole. Your father had five years to introduce you to his girlfriend, who you don't know who has never in all that time given the slightest indication of wanting to meet you. And he throws a fit because she's not invited to your wedding? Does he really think this is the right place when your mother, his ex-wife, will also be in attendance for you to meet Chloe? Let him be hurt. He will recover or not. And enjoy your wedding. For some background, I live with my brother while he's getting his feet under him and I'm getting my master's degree. He is 27. I'm 22. He's been dating this girl Liz for about six years, and she is about to come unglued waiting for him to propose, and he claims that he's just not ready yet. About four months ago, my brother found my Tinder account, and he and his friends basically catfished the crap out of me using pics they stole from Instagram. I was an idiot and I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I wanted to get revenge on him somehow, but wasn't sure. The week before Valentine's Day, I was in a B&N &N and saw this book, how to buy diamonds on one of the end caps. I saw my chance, so I bought the book. On Valentine's morning, I stole my brother's phone, turned it off, and watched him stomp around the house, which in reality was a pretty good prank. He went to work without his phone, and since I was home all day, I hid the book in the stack of crap my brother keeps on the coffee table, and at like four, I texted Liz and said basically, bro lost his phone. He wanted me to text you to come over now if able so he can take you out. She texted me back and showed up maybe in an hour. I made sure the binding of the book was plainly visible and let her in. I said I had to study in my room and closed the door. I could hear her flipping through a magazine and then about died laughing when she called her sister or friend and said something like, he has a how to buy a diamond book. Oh my God, do you think it's tonight? Oh my God, it has to be tonight. It has to be. I'll call you back as soon as it happens. I literally couldn't contain myself. I was laughing so hard. So, bro got home. They went on their date. Maybe two hours later, they came back through the door screaming bloody murder at each other. Obviously, he hadn't proposed, and she was screaming at him why did he have a How to Buy Diamonds book if he wasn't going to propose. He was trying to talk his way around it all because she was furious with him. Finally, she dug the book out of the stack of stuff and threw it at the wall. My brother obviously knew it was me at that point, but Liz didn't care and said she needed a break to figure out if the relationship was really for her after six years. As far as I know, she hasn't spoken to him in two weeks. 
For my brother's part, he understands that I was just getting back at him, and he admits it was a pretty good joke, but he is truly, truly brokenhearted over Liz possibly breaking up with him over it. I feel really bad, but at the same time, I didn't make her freak out. Am I the a-hole for doing it? You're the a-hole. You are such an a-hole, dude. There's pranks, and then there's poking the bear. And it sounds like your brother's girlfriend was a bear that was just coming out of hibernation with a serious craving for a proposal. I didn't make her freak out? No, you just gave her false hope when you knew she had an itching to be proposed to. You're the a-hole. It was a prank to get your brother, but you also dragged an innocent person into this, and clearly, this is a very, very sensitive issue for her. You're the a-hole. That wasn't a prank on your brother. That was a prank on Liz. What did she do to you to deserve being put through the ringer like that? Pranks are supposed to be light-hearted enough so that all parties involved can have a laugh. Instead, you just gave someone false hope in the hopes that it would blow up on your brother. Of course, that makes you the a-hole here. My, 42 female, daughter, Abby, recently turned 18. Her father, Max, 43 male, took off before Abby was born and came back ready to take responsibility and the court gave him 50% custody. He's been taking care of roughly 60% of Abby's financial needs. To make up for the five years he wasn't there, he spoiled her rotten no matter what I said. And I think this is why she gained so much weight in her preteens and teens. Disclaimer. I believe everybody is beautiful, so don't come at me. Abby embarked on her weight loss journey a year ago, and we set up a milestone reward system where I'd buy her a little gift every milestone she crossed. Four months ago, she asked that I didn't get her any more rewards and added up to her birthday gift. And for her gift, she wants a vacation I will pay for, for her and her friends, instead of the huge party I had promised for her 18th. I said okay. Fast forward to last weekend. We started preparing for her vacation. I called the other two girls as parents to confirm the girls would be there and learned Abby's best friend, Betty, isn't going. Betty loves traveling and was looking forward to the vacation, so I asked why. Apparently, Abby uninvited her because she is too chubby to look good in pictures. I calmly talked to Abby and reminded her how Betty would feel being left out for such a reason, and she went off with, I didn't work so hard for this vacation, so my pictures will be ruined. Long story short, I insisted Abby should apologize to Betty for body shaming her and reminded her how horrible she felt when people did it to her, not even more than a year ago. I also threatened to cancel the vacation if she didn't apologize, because although I am glad she is so confident in her own skin now, it is not an excuse to put others down. She stormed off and went to her dad. I later received a call from my very angry ex telling me off for making decisions for Abby and using this as an excuse to cancel. He also insisted he pays an extra 10% for Abby's needs, so he demands I don't cancel. I told him off for enabling her picking on people and hung up, then called Abby and reminded her I was not asking her to invite Betty if she doesn't want to, but to apologize for how unnecessarily mean and hurtful she was. She didn't. Instead, she tried to get Betty to talk to me and tell me she lied about being uninvited and that she, Betty, canceled because she wasn't feeling well. When Betty said no, she sent a ton of angry texts and insults I can't even write down. Betty sent me screenshots, so I canceled the vacation. My ex tried to rebook it, but it's a very popular place with a long waiting list, so soon after I canceled, the girls were replaced with other people. My ex and Abby think I'm an a-hole for canceling the vacation, and my daughter's not talking to me. Some of my friends agree on my approach, while others think I should have put my daughter first. So, am I the a-hole? Her birthday is on the 10th, and vacation would have started yesterday. Edited to add, because it's being brought up, Abby losing weight, how she wanted to lose it, and how she wanted me to support her on her journey, the gifts, were entirely her choice. Not the a-hole. Teaching your daughter not to be a horrible human being is putting her first. Not the a-hole. I commend your strength and parenting skills. This was the right thing to do and would have been hard to do. Well done. You deserve to go on the holiday yourself. Absolutely not the a-hole. Uninviting someone because you only want skinny people in your pictures is a disgusting attitude, frankly. Sorry, I just don't find a nicer word for it. I am totally with you that this needs to have consequences. And while I'm very much against breaking promises, I do believe this is an exception. Like you said, your daughter knows what it feels like. She, but anyone really, 
should be supportive of friends wanting to lose weight if that is the case. And if it isn't, then she should just mind her own body. My, 35, brother-in-law, 37, is known for impulsively spending frivolously on things for himself and does not have the money for. Most recently, a pizza oven, paddleboard, and other costly non-essentials. He very much tries to keep up with the Joneses as well. Anything he gets is because he saw someone else buy it because it's trending. He's up to his eyeballs in debt, not making money at his commission job, and currently fighting for his sobriety against a decade-long addiction that he successfully hid from his wife until a few years ago. I honestly believe his brain is stuck with C impulsiveness, but he swears he doesn't need rehab or therapy to fix his issues. He has a nice truck with a $600 a month payment that his wife, my sister, 36, makes the payments on. Meanwhile, she drives herself and their baby around in the same car she had since high school. It's a tin crap box and isn't up to today's safety standards. Brother-in-law hits me up about wanting to buy a Rolex and wanted some advice about buying one. I sold them for a long time. At that point, I carefully worded my response and advised that luxury watches are for people who can afford them after everything else is taken care of, and he needs to prioritize his family before buying one. I also mentioned that in my experience, the people who could truly afford a Rolex could also flush the cost of one down the toilet and not be impacted even slightly and that we're not in that economic class of people. I've seen people overextend themselves on these watches just to be able to flex, and that's exactly what he's doing. I perhaps went too far by saying if he has money for a Rolex, then he has money to put his wife and baby in a safer car that was built in this century. He got upset because I didn't tell him what he wanted to hear, but I meant what I said, and there's no one else there to save him from himself. His wife is trying to be very supportive of him and his recovery, and usually goes along with his impulsive buys because it reduces their fighting, and the money isn't going towards D. It's not my business, but I worry for my little nephew, and considerably less, my sister who enables him. I'll accept the a-hole designation if I cross the line here. Not the a-hole. I've seen this acquisition behavior in addicts and hoarders. The sad thing is, after getting that watch, he probably won't care about it at all. It is all about the fix of obtaining it. He needs to get his wife a new car. No real man wants their family dragging around in the worst vehicle they own. Not the a-hole. Sometimes people need to hear the truth. But in the future, I wouldn't talk about anything you have experience with. Just say, I'm not comfortable discussing it. Anything you say, he will use as a reason to indulge himself. Just gray rock him every time. You should also consider, if you haven't already, offering to help your sister find a therapist for herself. She needs a reality check if she's driving her child around in an unsafe car while paying for a nice car for your brother-in-law. Not the a-hole. If you can't buy two Rolexes, you shouldn't buy one. Dude's acting like a kid with money to burn because he's being enabled. You were right to call him out. Your sister has some ownership too. Instead of tightening the purse strings like she should, she enabled his behavior to keep the peace.